Now that all of the haunted houses and scare zones for Halloween Horror Nights 32 have been revealed, it seems that many of our questions about this year's event have been finally answered. However, for many, knowing what's coming raises more questions. Specifically for this video though, I want to focus on a question about a certain character who seems to have his hands in many aspects of HHN this year. A character who's lurked in the shadows for over two decades, subtly weaving himself in and out of the event's lore and its history. A character known for his connection to the rise and fall of the icon of icons, Jack the Clown. A character known simply as Dr. Oddfellow. Here we uncover the past of Dr. Oddfellow, dive into the real world history of the character as well as the in-universe one, and discover who our next HHN icon truly is is. Turning back to the 1990s, Universal Orlando was starting to get their footing with their new Halloween event, Halloween Horror Nights. And throughout the decade, you'd see different characters take turns hosting the event, setting the stage for formal event icons. However, these characters were IP-based, pulling from Universal's legendary horror catalog or from other popular horror franchises of the time. You would see the Universal Classic Monsters, Norman Bates, Beetlejuice, or the Crypt Keeper featured on event marketing, as well as the event itself. But as HHN entered the new millennia, the creative team wanted to try something new, creating an all new character with a storied past that would become the first true Halloween Horror Nights icon. Jack Schmidt, aka Jack the Clown, was a sadistic circus clown who would become the star of the show at Halloween Horror Nights 10. However, with him, he brought another character into the growing lore behind the event, a character instrumental to his past and present named Dr. Rich Oddfellow. While Jack didn't have any haunted houses to his own at this event, Oddfellow did. Specifically, he had the Fear House, located in Nazerman's and Sting Alley, being themed around Oddfellow's torturous carnival of thrills. However, while Jack would continue to find success, returning to the event multiple times and ushering in an all-new era of original HHN icons, Oddfellow would disappear into the shadows after 2000, not to return to the event for another seven years. While Jack had been present at the event in those following years, as I mentioned, it would be HHN 17 in 2007 7 that would really explore his backstory, reintroducing the character of Dr. Oddfellow and diving a bit deeper into Jack's lore, specifically his relationship with Oddfellow. However, even then, Oddfellow was just a whisper, a legend in the HHN mythos that was thought to be firmly placed in the past with no more loose ends. Well, it seems as if 23 years after he was initially introduced, Oddfellow is back with a vengeance, taking control of this year's HHN with both with a haunted house diving into his twisted origins, and five scare zones centered around his quest for power. But you ask once again, who is Dr. Oddfellow? And to truly get a grasp on the story behind this character, we must go back to the beginning. While much of his early life is unknown, Rich Oddfellow begins his story as a curious man, and this unexplained curiosity leads him down the path of finding a way around death. He finds an intriguing interest, or perhaps obsession, with the Zodiac, and how it can grant him the immortality he seeks. As far as we know, this path begins with an unknown expedition inside a mysterious jungle during the 1920s, and amongst the lush greenery and wildlife Life, he comes across a foreboding temple. Venturing inside, he finds a relic, a crystal skull that contains immense power. And with this newfound power, Oddfellow puts his curiosity to the test, using the skull to twist and morph his surroundings into his own horrifying creations. However, when he's not exploring ancient ruins, Oddfellow spends his days operating his own carnival of thrills, which was a place to present his own oddities for the sake of entertainment. While many would come to perform at this carnival, the most well known would be one Jack Schmidt, who was an escapee from Shady Brook Rest Home and Sanitarium and loved entertaining small children under the guise of an innocent clown. However, Jack had a more sinister persona behind his friendly facade. He wasn't there simply to entertain small children, but to murder them in unspeakable ways, using the Carnival of Thrills as a way to feast on fear. 
Moving ahead, the year is 1939, and Dr. Oddfellow's Carnival of Thrills has made its way to the Midwest. With the allure of fun and excitement, guests flocked to the carnival to see what was in store. However, just as Jack presented a deceptive facade to lure in unsuspecting victims, so did Oddfellow. While it seemed fun on the outside, Oddfellow also used the carnival to curate his curiosity, torturing and mutilating guests as well as other performers before absorbing the souls of his victims with his cane of souls, likely infused with the power of the crystal skull. However, he didn't just do this for his own sadistic pleasure, but also did it as a sacrifice to harness the power of the Zodiac, which would grant him that immortality he so desired. Both men used the carnival as a front for murder, and while these murders were committed in the shadows, they wouldn't go unnoticed. As the FBI were investigating a string of child abductions, the path started to lead to Jack Schmidt and the traveling carnival. Fearing that the authorities were drawing nearer, Jack turned to the only person he could, his boss, Dr. Oddfellow. However, upon revealing the truth to Oddfellow, including the 13 bodies of children he had murdered inside of three trunks, Oddfellow felt an air of nervousness. And this made sense, because he couldn't risk bringing the authorities close enough to find out about his own grisly murders. So he did the only thing he saw fit and killed Jack Schmidt. However, Jack didn't just go without a fight, as he lunged towards Oddfellow, leaving a vicious scratch across his face. This scratch caused not only a permanent scar of the man's betrayal, but also some of his immortal blood being transferred to Jack himself, which will be important for later. With Jack dead and out of the picture, Oddfellow needed to make an escape, burning all traces of the carnival and finding himself transported to the realm of the Zodiac where he would take it over and twist it to fit his insidious vision. In the following decades, Dr. Oddfellow would lurk in the shadows, disguising himself as different creatures to secure more power. For example, in the 1940s, it was said that Oddfellow sent a crate of oddities and beasts to unleash their carnage on a San Francisco shipping yard. However, Oddfellow would would calculate his next big move in the 1960s, where he disguised himself as a vampire named Erlo Wolf, using a fictitious story of a carnival attack that turned him into one of them to secure a seat amongst the vampire council. He would spend the better part of the decade rising up within the ranks. However, in 1968, he would find himself at odds with Olato, a more established member within the council. After successfully convincing the council to allow vampires to feed as they please, he finds his next target, a New York music festival. After this 1969 incident, Oddfellow crawled once again back into the shadows. However, his past would rear its head back at him, as in the 1980s, Jack Schmidt was rediscovered by the BBC as they were investigating the Dark Rides of America, and in 2000, he was unleashed on Universal Studios Florida as part of their Halloween Horror Nights seasonal event. From then on, Jack was back, and he was seeking revenge against Oddfellow, looking high and low for the man that betrayed and killed him. It wouldn't be until 2007 where Jack would finally reunite with Dr. Oddfellow, and when they did reunite, there was no room for pleasantries, as Jack brutally murdered his former boss at the Carnival of Thrills, taking Oddfellow's ringleader coat, and most importantly, his cane of souls, which possessed the power of immortality. However, just as Jack himself, Oddfellow Oddfellow didn't simply die at this moment. Instead, he was sent to a dark dimension in which the horrors within are completely unknown at this point. It would be 16 years before Dr. Rich Oddfellow returned to our world, but with his cane of souls in hand, he's willing to be a bit more gracious, offering immortality to anyone who seeks it. However, it comes at a steep price, as he brings forth horrifying images to break our connection to the mortal world in exchange for immortality. This man, confident, cunning, crazed, callous, this is the odd fellow we know now. This is what awaits us behind those arches at Universal Studios Florida. This is who lurks in the fog that pumps throughout the streets of the park. This is the legend that has become real. This is the story behind our next HHN icon. I wanted to say first that I hope this video was helpful for those who may not know who Oddfellow is from past event years, or those who may not know all the new lore that's filled into his backstory for this year. Because even if you knew who Oddfellow was, they have changed a lot of his story this year, and I think it'll be good to know before going into the event itself. 
And that brings me to the fact that I feel like even though we now know a good amount of Oddfellow's story, at least his main quest for immortality, there's still a lot we could learn from the event itself. So this video may be revisited once we see the Twisted Origins house and the Scare Zones to add a bit more context. I again really just wanted to make this one as prep for those wondering who the hell Oddfellow is going into this event that he's clearly dominating. Are you excited to finally meet Dr. Oddfellow? Are you upset with some of the changes to his backstory? Are you happy about some of the changes to his backstory? Let me know in the comments below. But anyways, if you enjoy HHN deep dives and history like this one, as well as HHN updates and vlogs from the event itself, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I know you all love these deep dive history videos, so I want to thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.